In this video, I will show how you can use the Wayback Machine for web studies. The Wayback Machine is a digital archive containing snapshots of web pages over time. It is maintained by the Internet Archive, which is a non-profit digital library that provides free public access to collections of digitized materials, including websites, music, music moving images and books. As said, today I'll focus on a subpart of archive.org, namely the Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine was set up by Brewster Kale and Bruce Gilead. Originally, it was thought of as a solution to the problem of broken links, where one might link to a page which has since gone offline. The Wayback Machine would allow one, which encounters a broken link, to still visit the archived version of that link. Currently, the FAQ of the Wayback Machine states that their mission is to preserve culture and heritage of digital artifacts. The Wayback Machine builds its archives by crawling sites that are either in online directories, such as the Open Directory projects, as well as sites which are well linked from other sites. Additionally, and maybe even more importantly, it uses data from Alexa Internet crawls. The latter frequents sites based on whether and how often they have been visited by users who have the Alexa toolbar installed. Whenever one of the crawlers has visited the site, it will make a snapshot of that site available in the Wayback Machine. Let us take a look at an example. The Wayback Machine, available at web.archive.org, allows you to enter a URL to inspect at which date they archived that URL. Let us try youtube.com. After clicking Browse History, you are presented with a calendar indicating at which times they have made a snapshot of the URL. At the top you see a timeline per year and the main interface shows at which date snapshots were made. Hovering a specific day, you can see that for youtube.com they currently make multiple snapshots per day. Moving back to the first year in which YouTube was archived, you can see that it was frequented much less. The frequency of snapshots is variable, so not all updates on a website may be recorded. Generally, the more popular websites have many more snapshots than lesser known websites. Also keep in mind that it might take a while, up to a few weeks or even months, before the snapshot produced by a crawl is made available in the Wayback Machine. Let us take a look at the first snapshot of YouTube.com as it looked like on 28 April 2005. YouTube started out as a dating site. Who knew? Let me show you a couple of things here which are good to keep in mind. In the calendar overlay at the top of the page, you can see which snapshot we are currently viewing. Note that in the URL to the snapshot, the date is also present. The long string of numbers depicts the date and time at which the snapshot was recorded. So first we'll have the year, 2005, then the month, April, the day, 28, and then, uh, drilling further down, we can see that the archive was made at 1 o'clock, 47 minutes and 15 seconds. Note also that you can click the calendar away. Because of archiving quirks, some archived versions of web pages may not be presented as you would expect. Here, for example, you can see that the layout is a bit messed up. During your explorations of the web archive, you might also encounter missing images and notice that some functionalities of a site are missing. This becomes especially apparent on dynamic pages, when they contain forms, JavaScript or other elements that require interaction with the originating host. The archive will then not contain the original site's functionality. When we click Favorites, for example, you are presented with an error men mentioning that the archive got a HTTP 302 response at crawl time. After a few seconds, you'll be redirected to another page. While we clicked on favorites in the snapshot of 28 April 2005, the archive has now redirected us to a snapshot of 9 November 2006. And this happens because some sites may not be archived completely. When you are surfing an incomplete archived site and you are clicking a link which does not exist in the archive, the Wayback Machine will grab the closest available dates. In the event that the archive does not have a link archived at all, 
the Wayback Machine will look for the link on the live web and grab it if available. It is thus important to pay attention to the date codes uh, at the top or embedded in the URL, as explained earlier. Let us go back to the previous version of which we were looking at to show you another type of error. Clicking sign up in the 2005 version leads us to a page by the Wayback Machine telling us that the page could not be crawled or displayed due to robots.txt. The standard for robots exclusion, the robots.txt, is a means by which website owners can instruct automated systems not to crawl their sites. Website owners can specify files or directories that are disallowed from a crawl, and they can even create specific rules for different automated crawlers. And all of this information is contained in a file called robots.txt. When we click the robots.txt from youtube.com, we can see that the crawlers should not visit the login link, which we just clicked. And while youtube.com does not allow specific locations on its site to be crawled, some sites are more restrictive. If we, for example, try to find archived pages from facebook.com, you can see that the web archive does not return any content. There are some other error codes too. For example, when a copyright holder requested a site to be excluded or one of the machines containing the snapshots are down. If you see such an error and don't know what it means, you can consult the FAQ of the Wayback Machine. Fortunately, in the past two years, the Wayback Machine has become much more stable, reliable and fast. Finally, I'd like to point out that when studying a site or URL over time, it is good to keep in mind that a site may use different URLs to point to the same thing. And this can happen, for example, when a site is redesigned.